Hello, my name is Jonatas and I'll be talking to you about a study conducted by me, João, Sam and Alex, which is called 50 Shades of Red, Color Variation in Fiddler Crab's Claws. First of all, let's talk about animal communication. Animals communicate by using signals, which are traits that carry information from signaler to receiver. The receiver then processes this information and produces a response to it. This is a base model that applies to all signaling systems. Animals communicate to attract mates, like this peacock spider performing a courtship display, to drive competitors away, like this chameleon performing a threat display, and to avoid predation, like this frog that has opposamatic colors. These goals can be achieved by using assessment signals, which inform the signaler's phenotype to the receivers. For instance, if a male wants to attract a female and drive other males away, it can use signals that allow these receivers to assess how healthy it is, how strong it is, or how much energy it has, so that these receivers can decide whether the signaler male is a good mate or a strong competitor. In these previous examples, the animals are using colors as signals, and that's actually very common in nature. But what is color, and how can it be used as a signal? Color is a property of light, which is what we call electromagnetic radiation within the visible spectrum. The visible spectrum is particular to a species, and the one shown here is the human visible spectrum, but other animals can see more or less than that. Colors can vary in some attributes, such as hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue is how we usually classify the colors, like blue or red. Saturation is related to the intensity of the color, and brightness is related to how dark or bright the color appears to be. Colors in animals can be produced by pigments, like we see in this anglerfish and in this butterfly. They can be produced by structures that reflect light in a certain way, like we see in these feathers, or they can be produced by a combination of both, like we see in these bottom examples. The production of these colors is often related to an animal's condition. And when these colors are used as signals, variation in their attributes can affect the quality of the signal and thus the receiver's response to it. But why am I focusing so much on signals when the title stated that I was going to talk about fiddler crabs? Male fiddler crabs are known for having major claws that function not only as a weapon, but also as assessment signals of male quality. They use their major claws in waving displays to threaten other males and attract females to their burrows. The signaler's claw size and wave rate, as well as some acoustic and seismic signals, are known to be assessed by male and female receivers. In the fiddler crab Lepitucrogoyensis, males show noticeable variation in claw color within the same population. In some species of fiddler crabs, females use claw color to identify conspecific males. But an intraspecific variation in claw color such as this has never been described, and therefore, we don't know what is the function of claw color in these species. Given the major clause importance for reproduction, this color variation may be another assessment signal for the female receivers, male receivers, or both. So in this study, we wanted to answer how does the claw color of male Lepitucuruguayensis vary within a population? To do that, we collected 70 males in a mangrove in São Paulo state in Brazil and autonomized their claws. We photographed the claws with a digital camera in a controlled setting. We also photographed a gray standard in the same settings. This gray standard is used to correct the photo's lightning conditions to measure their colors more accurately. We used a micro toolbox developed by Torshanko and Stevens to quantify the claws saturation and luminance, which is related to brightness. We tested if the color attributes follow the unimodal or bimodal distribution to see if there is a continuous variation in claw color or if there are well-defined classes of color within a population. What we found was that luminance is unimodally distributed, since the unimodal model, the blue curve, is a better fit to our data. Also, there is an almost symmetric distribution of bright and dark claws. We also found that long claws tend to be darker, but there is a lot of variation in the data. Similarly to luminance, saturation is unimodally distributed, but the curve is left skewed, meaning that intense colors are more common in the population. Also, long claws tend to have more saturated colors, but again, there's a lot of variation in the data. Since we found variation in attributes of claw color and they are related to the morphology of the claw, 
it is likely the claw collar is an assessment signal in Lepitoco uruguayensis. Considering the function of the claw during waving displays, future studies should test how claw collar affects the response of male and female receivers of this signal. In conclusion, our study shows that claw luminance and saturation are unimodally distributed and are related to the morphology of the claw. Also, due to the variation we found and the importance of claw during waving displays, it is likely the claw collar is an assessment signal in Lepitoco uruguayensis. And finally, to understand better the function of claw collar in these species, future studies should test how claw collar affects female choice and male male competition. Thank you for watching and don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions.